do a brief introduction of the folks who are going to be kind of the panelists of the evening to share information with you. So first, um, welcome. Good evening, students, family, and guests. We're happy to have you as admitted students and guests joining us. We're we are in the meeting module of Zoom and you all look like experts already. Um, the session is being recorded. So if you don't want to be seen or heard, then please make sure that your video is off and you have your microphone muted. You're welcome at any point in time to enter your questions into the chat or um, at the end, we can unmute and have a quick conversation and um, answer any questions there as well. So as I said, we'll go ahead and do quick introductions. I'll get started and then I'll we can popcorn it around to the other folks that are going to be leading portions today. My name is Kelly Shannon and I have the sun shining like right on me. So um, I'm sorry if you can't see me very well, but this is the best spot I have. Um, I'm the director of campus recreation and oversee a lot of wellness initiatives on campus as well. So we'll be talking all things campus rec and I thought maybe just for fun, we could share our favorite flavor ice cream because I just got done eating ice cream for dinner. And mine is chocolate peanut butter. Um, Kaylee, I'll go ahead and, and send it to you. Hi, everyone. My name is Kaylee. I am the current facility operations graduate coordinator for campus recreation. Um, so basically, that means that I oversee our fitness center um, and all of the staff who work there. Um, I also oversee our aquatic center and the lifeguards, and then I oversee all of our other um, facility recreational spaces. So we have dance studios, we have a main gym, we have an aux gym, and then we have um, a turf campus recreation field. So I also supervise that. I am also a group fitness instructor, so I love all things fitness and I teach a few classes. Um, my current favorite favorite ice cream, it's definitely seasonal, um, is black raspberry. I love that. That is my favorite summertime ice cream flavor. Okay, maybe I'll hop in there next. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Sandrine. Um, kind of rhymes with tangerine. Not spelled exactly the same way, but um, I know it's a little bit different. Um, I am the director of the Office of Student Activities and Engagement. Um, and that means, and you, you'll of course be hearing a little bit more, we, we go by SAE since student activities and engagement is um, a little bit of a mouthful, um, but we oversee all of our student organizations. Um, and so we, we'll go into all those fun details in a little bit, but um, Kelly's got me thinking about ice cream. So that's all I'm thinking about right now. And I think, you know, I, I think I want to go with mint chocolate chip, but I think I kind of also, well, I love chocolate. So really anything chocolate. Um, I really like like cookie dough or cookies and cream, but with like chocolate ice cream, <laughs> like those often have vanilla ice cream and I'm always like, well, where's the chocolate ice cream? So just give me all the chocolate. Um, so I'm going to toss it over to Crystal. Hi everyone, um, my name is Crystal. I am the Assistant Director of Student Activities and Engagement. So I am the right hand wing woman of Sandrine right here, who's the greatest boss ever, if you can tell I'm pointing to her. Um, so I basically help with the advising of class council and CPB, which we will get more into detail when we get to the SAE section. And I we also help with our front desk. I'm the advisor of the front desk. I literally just had a brain fart, I'm so sorry. Uh, but we'll also get more to that as well. And my favorite ice cream is cookies and cream because I love cookies and cream everything. So I will pretty much eat it all, it's great. And then I will popcorn it to Taylor. Hi, I'm Taylor. I'm a sophomore history major in the College of Ed. And I am a core staff member here at the Mar at Mary Washington. And my favorite flavor of ice cream I'm gonna have to go with Crystal's choice, which is cookies and cream. I agree, it is very good. <laughs> oh, 
All right. Well, we're going to go ahead and get started with our campus rec portion of the evening. And um, Kaylee's going to be doing a quick screen share so that we can take you on a virtual tour of this spaces. And the two of us are going to sort of tag team all campus rec information. So as we're talking about something, feel free to drop it in the chat. And if we don't get to it while we're talking, um, while SAE <laughs> is going, then we'll have a chance to, um, to to go ahead there. So first and foremost, what is Campus Rec? Why do we exist? Um, we typically um, answer this question by we're the, we're the department that likes to find fun things, um, fun ways to move your body and engage students, faculty, and staff in the community. But we, we serve as a resource to improve the lives of the UMW community. It's a great place for folks to find friends, um, and to boost their physical and mental well-being. We do this in a lot of different ways. We try to be as creative as possible with regard to our programming so that we can engage students um, in a wide variety of activities. And so we look to um, certainly create fun and engaging programming, but also educational programming. So if you're not super sure how to lift um, like maybe do powerlifting moves or maybe not sure how to use the selectorized machinery or maybe not sure, um, gosh, anything wellness or fitness related, you can, we can always kind of create a workshop or some social media content or an entire program suited to um, suited to educate. And so that's super fun as well. We currently have about 80 student staff um, among the, the fitness center and our different program areas. And we'll talk more about student employment and how you might become a student employee within Campus Rec toward the end of our presentation. Uh, throughout our time together, we'll talk a little bit more about intramural programming, sport clubs, group fitness, outdoor adventures, aquatics, and then the facilities that we have um, to use, which Kaylee kind of gave you a brief overview already. We'll talk a little bit too about how you sign up for our programs and how you utilize the fitness center, um, how you might want to register for an outdoor rec trip um, and things like that. And then I suppose lastly, before we kind of get into the tour, I want to put a tiny plug out there, really a really big plug, I suppose, for our social media. Um, we have a really wonderful team of students there. Our social media is completely student run. Um, and UMW Campus Rec is where you can follow us on Instagram and, and Facebook. Um, it's a really wonderful spot to see what we've been up to, see what kind of programs and fun things Campus Rec is up to. But then also we do a lot of engaging things like Instagram takeover stories. And I think one of the most fun things right now is that our marketing interns, is are they're going to all of the sport club practices and participating in their sport club practices and taking video footage of it. And it has me cracking up all of the time. They're so fun. Um, okay. So let's go ahead and get started with this tour. This is the front door of the fitness center. Um, Kaylee, do you want to talk at all, or do you want? I'm happy to um, to be the voice, but you're. This is your space too, so I don't know if I'll do it justice like you would. Okay, awesome. Well, I can kind of talk about the front desk. So this is how you will enter the gym. Um, typically when you come in, you will need your Eagle One ID card, which is something that I'm sure you've heard a lot about. Um, you'll swipe that in. Currently, everyone is required to have a face mask. Um, if you forget one, we have some at the front desk for you. Um, so this is where you check in. This is also where you're able to rent free equipment. So you notice that we have some basketballs, we have some resistance bands. Um, you can rent those for free at the front desk. This is also where we do our transactions for um, uh, outdoor recreation equipment or any other type of things. So you'll come here, right here is where we have a cleaning station. So you'll pick up your spray bottle and your wipe and you'll be on your way to work out. Um, so this is our front lobby. This is our cycle studio. Uh, currently classes are happening in our ox gym just to be properly social distanced. Um, but this is traditionally where our cycle classes are held. Okay, and then this is just looking out at the rest of our space. Um, so upstairs is the cardio deck, downstairs is our strength floor. Um, okay, Let's see if it'll load. Okay, so this is our cycle studio. Um, as you can tell, it has a really awesome mural. 
um, that was painted by students and it has a bunch of the UMW landmarks like corals, um, the bell tower, and then other notable buildings. So it's always fun to look at when you're in there. Okay. Um, so I guess we'll go to the aux gym before talking about the rest of our uh, gym spaces because that's the order this is. So currently this is where we hold all of our group fitness classes if they are not outside. Um, this is also where open recreation basketball uh, can be had. Um, we have uh, our sport clubs practice in here and also certain intramural events occur in this location. Um, here are the cheer mats for the cheer team. They roll them out and are able to safely practice. Also varsity sports use this area for um, baseball batting practice if the fields are too wet. Okay. Apologies everyone, my computer is slow today. Um, so this is our strength floor. As you can tell, uh, this is where you kind of saw before. Um, so we have a bunch of free weights here and some, um, just some benches. This is what the floor looks like. If you notice, we have um, little locations that are blocked off by blue areas. These are our exercise pods. So if you go to each pod, there are various pieces of equipment um, grouped together based off of muscle group. So if you're unsure of what machines to use when you come to the gym, this is a great place to start. Start at pod one. Those are our more selectorized machines. Um, they're a little bit easier to use because they're not cable selectorized. You don't have to worry about using the same amount of pressure for each arm or each leg. Uh, so that's a great resource if you're first looking to start working out at the gym. Um, we also have a core exercise area. Um, so we have some more free weights here, more mirrors and then just some core mats if you are looking to do some stretching or some core work. Um, and here is a better view at some of these pods. Okay, so this is a great place to work out. If you are into weightlifting, this Olympic lifting floor is the one place in the gym where you are able to um, deadlift and actually drop your weights. So. Um, there's definitely people who like to go there and just drop them and make those loud noises that you would typically hear at a gym. Um, Kelly, jump in at any time if you want to talk about more things. This is our strength rig. So we have our TRX bands, some bench presses, and a bunch of weight plates. If you notice right here, this is our floor monitor station. So this is typically where a fitness center staff member will be standing if they are not on the floor cleaning or rearranging things. This is a great place to go if you have questions about how to use something, want to know where something is located, or you just generally need some help. We uh, typically have some exercise sheets out here if you need ideas for a workout. Um, and anytime you see someone in a red shirt at the gym, they are there to help you. They are trained um, how to use equipment, what, to know, what they need to know, all that sort of stuff. So they are a great resource if you are a first time um, gym goer or if you have experience, but you just wanna know a little bit more about our recreational spaces. And Kelly, if you want to fill up any of the downtime where my things yeah. are loading. Yeah, it's funny. Technology sometimes is like really, really great. And then also sometimes when it's slow, mm -hmm. it's, it's just slow. Here's another view of the strength floor area. Um, Kelly, I would say we can go ahead and go at, um, to the next one. Our rig has monkey bars and typically TRX equipment. And sometimes we host some group classes out there or events like ladies lift night, um, some of those educational type programming that we were talking about earlier. This is our cardio floor. So we just recently got some new cardio equipment. We do have it on a lease program. And so that varies between getting replaced every three or four years. And these equipment, these pieces of equipment, some of them have 
um, screens on them so you can do a virtual bike ride. Um, you can hook up and watch movies. You can do all sorts of really fun things as far as tracking your workouts. So here are some of our, um, our cycles, or I'm sorry, our ergs. Um, my office. That's my little window up there. So if you ever want to come see me in, in my office, that's typically where I am um, if I'm not at home. Um, oh, great. A dance studio. Um, so this is yeah. where the, the group fitness programming that we offer is um, for the most part hosted. This is also a space for theater and dance academic classes. And so you may also use this space if you're part of a club that is a performance-based or a dance-based club or organization. Um, a lot of those clubs will practice during um, and use those spaces as well. Our group fitness program is typically $10 for the year, and that gives you unlimited access to all of the group fitness classes. We have things like, well, cycle, um, yoga, some different types of cardio classes. Um, we've got some good, great stretching and centering classes, some core classes. Um, what am I missing? Anything, Kaylee? Those are the big ones, I think. Some kickboxing type classes sometimes. And I think I saw some words that we were maybe going to see the pool, but it might be loading. Um, or we'll go back to the lobby. Just kidding. Well, I'll talk. I had, I'll talk. Sorry, I had to refresh my screen and I am working okay. on getting this back. No worries at all. Um, you take your time doing whatever you need. There to. we go. There's, we got okay. it. So there's their pool. Yeah. And this is a, a space for where our club swim team practices and competes, where our varsity swim team practices and competes. And we also have open recreation swim hours. As you can imagine, we also hire lifeguards and host different special events and things like that, that as well. Um, there's a lift, uh, an accessible lift and a um, family locker room down on the main level of the pool too. So that makes the pool a little bit easier to use. This is a picture of our main gym. And this is in the Gulrick space, just down the hall, kind of down the hall and up the stairs, I suppose, from the dance studios and the pool. Um, we use this space for sport club practices as well as intramural programming. And intramural is similar to group fitness in that it's $10 for the year. And that gets you unlimited access to all of the participation in intramurals that you could ever want. So all of your beach volleyball, any soccer or flag football, um, there have been some really great mileage challenges or um, cornhole, soccer, tennis. We've gotten really creative with COVID things so that you don't have um, to be close to one another to be playing defense or being competitive in games. Um, what else am I missing there for intramurals? I think that might be about it. So, um, so yep, $10 and that gets you access to everything. Um, the campus rec field is another space where we do our sport clubs and um, they're down there, there's a sand volleyball court as well. Um, our sport clubs are, you can imagine our, our men's and women's club volleyball teams really love that sand volleyball court and they, but they do practice in the main gym for the most part. Um, as far as sport clubs uh, and practices go, you'll hear a lot more about club carnival from Sandrine and from Crystal, but for now, I'll let you know that you can find all of the sport clubs that we offer on our website. You can also find them on my UMW and you can access the contact information on my UMW. It is also listed, we have their email addresses and their Instagram handles listed on our website. So there's lots of different ways that you can get in touch with folks and find out more about when practices are and how to go about meeting up with your club that you're most interested in. Um, okay, lastly, I wanna make sure that I share with you all some opportunities for employment within Campus Rec. And so the fitness center, um, entry. I'll, we'll talk about entry level positions um, because that's where you'll probably be starting. But with each of these, there's opportunities for leadership and promotion within. And so there's a lot of really fun opportunities there. The fitness center is always hiring um, always accepting applications for attendance. And so these are the entry level folks who are responsible for um, the front desk area, as Kaylee was mentioning, as, and also the, um, the monitoring and cleaning of the fitness center, as well as helping out with instruction for fitness um, equipment. 
lifeguards. They do need to have your certification and it needs to be current. Um, then group fitness instructors, we, um, we hire anybody who is certified, but we also at least once a year offer a semester long course that prepares students to become group fitness instructors. And so that if you're interested in that, then definitely keep an eye out on our Instagram and on our website, we'll have more information about how that'll look for the fall semester. We do hire intramural officials and there's no experience needed for this. All of the training is, um, is provided. And so you could be hired as a, either a scorekeeper or as a referee. And um, so that's, that's always a lot of fun. Outdoor rec trip leader is another position that we hire for. And similarly, you don't need to have a lot of experience, but we do like for you to have some outdoor recreation leadership experience. Um, we do provide training for that as well. We offer internships, mostly in our marketing area, but if you're doing anything else, maybe sports management or psychology, we have offered internships for those um, academic programs as well. So you can get credit for the work that you're doing within campus recreation. Um, Kaylee, did I miss anything? I feel like I went to lightning fast mode there at the end. Sorry, that was that was on me. Um, I think that's it. I think, um, just talking about Campus Rec, we do offer a lot of different things for anything you might be interested in. So we do have something for everyone, whether you wanna get outside or you want to get together with friends and do things together. So there definitely is something for everyone. I did put the link to the Campus Recreation website in the chat. So feel free to explore that to see what we have um, and what you can get involved in through Campus Rec. Perfect. Thanks so much, Kaylee. And if you all have questions, like I said, drop them in the chat and we'll be here. Actually, I'll be here. Kaylee's got to hop off for another commitment. Thanks so much, Kaylee. <laughs> all right. Who's up next? Is it SAE or? Well, Taylor, I was going to I was going to throw it to you if you wanted to go next, but I don't want to put you on the spot. Oh, I'm totally fine with being put on the spot. So hi, I'm Taylor, in case you need a little fresher. Um, so I'm just going to start and drop the link to the CCE's website in the chat. So you, if you want to look around while I'm talking, you can do that. So what is the CCE? Um, so the CCE is the Center for Community Engagement, and it helps UNW students get involved in service and volunteer work. The center also helps build to build connections between UMW students and the Fredericksburg community. So you work with the community a lot at the CCE and you get involved in different ways. Uh, we offer a range of programs such as CORE, UMW Votes, Alternative Service Breaks, Equal Resource Closet, and we can help you take community engaging classes. So I'm just gonna talk about some of those things real quick. So CORE stands for Community Outreach and Resources. We are the largest student run community service organizations on campus. I'm one of the students that helps runs it. Um, so each year we have six annual events such as Into the Streets, where we partner with community partners and service projects and Good Neighbor Day, where we partner with local neighbors in the surrounding neighborhoods around campus and like help them with their yard work. And it's like helps like build like personal relationships. It's really cool. We also have weekly programs that are run by council leaders. These programs range from working with animals to children to the elderly. And in normal times, we provide transportation for these programs. Um, and we also offer internships. Um, so I was an intern my freshman year and then I transferred to staff. And so the internship helps you learn about organizing and like core events and like you get to work with staff members. So you get to work with some older students and you learn professional skills that can help you later in your life and in your work. And so you can transfer from internship to staff and it's a really cool opportunity as person who's been through it. Um, so the other aspects of the CCE are UMW Votes, which is a nonpartisan program dedicated to educating the community about all aspects of the voting process. The UMW Votes program supports students, faculty, and staff as they work to help our community develop the skills, habits, and knowledge needed for life of engaged citizenship. If you volunteer with UMW Votes, you can help other students get educated about where the polling places are, what's being voted on, what positions are being 
elected for and different things of that nature. And if you're an ambassador for UMW votes, you can have pretty cool opportunities like talking with Mayor Greenlaw of Fredericksburg about voting, like redistrict, redistricting um, the different voting zones and they can help register people to vote. Fun fact, if you're a student, you can vote here in Fredericksburg. Like you don't have to vote at home, you can vote here. Um, they also give rides to the polls. So if you need transportation on election day, UMW votes can provide that for you in normal times, of course. <laughs> um, the next thing I'm gonna talk about is alternative service breaks. So ASB for short, short. And this program is where we partner with Habitats for Humanity to help build houses. And this usually takes place over spring break or right at the end of the semester. And you go out and you help build houses and it's for a week and you got you get to like see your impacts and like make houses and earn service hours and learn about working with other students more closely. The next thing I'm gonna talk about is the Eagle Resource Closet, which I am the co-coordinator for. I organize volunteers for that. Um, so the Eagle Resource Closet is an organization established for the UMW community by passionate students, faculty, and staff. Um, it helps to provide food, toiletries, clothing to students in need. We offer an online ordering system that is completely anonymous. Um, students can volunteer with the closet to help fill orders, organize, and spread the word about food insecurity among college students. It's more common than you think. And students can also donate to the closet and help provide for other UMW students. And so just shifting a little bit is you can also take community engaged classes, which we help to promote and offer. So community engaged classes are classes where you do service work as part of the class. Um, for example, if you're taking a sociology class that discusses homelessness, you might volunteer at the Thurman Brisbane Center, which is a local homeless shelter, and learn more deeply about this issue and different solutions and how to help. These classes range in subject, and so they, you have community-engaged classes in the biology department, the psychology department, the history department. They range all over the place, so whatever major you're interested in, you will likely be able to take a community engaged class. Um, I know, for example, upcoming, there's one where you're where they're working with a local grocery store to help food insecurity in the marketing department. So that's pretty cool. And it will satisfy the experiential learning requirement in case you're thinking about that. And it'll help you do all that. And so basically what the center is at its core is a way for students to get connected and learn more about the community, the UMW community, but also the greater Fredericksburg community and how to get involved and be connected with all of those things. And if you have any questions, because I know I just hammered a lot of information at you, can, you can drop it in the chat and I will take it over to the lovely ladies of SAE. Yay, I love it. Such good content and definitely, yes, um, please don't hesitate to drop your questions in the chat because um, we want this to be as helpful to you as possible. Um, and I'm also gonna put this out there. Um, I have a one-year-old who, and it seems like it's a, a hard day to be a one-year-old. So you may hear him in the background um, or his older brother who hopefully can um, maybe keep his volume down a little bit, but the one-year-old, he's just having a hard day. So I apologize in advance, but hopefully these headphones will help block some of that out. So SAE, Student Activities and Engagement. Um, I've got some notes. Hopefully it'll keep us on track. I'm going to do a little bit of screen sharing to show you how you can see. You can already start to kind of check out all of the clubs that we've got. Maybe I'll show you our website. Um, but just to give you a brief overview. Um, so SAE, again, Student Activities and Engagement. Um, we are here to help students get involved outside of the classroom. Um, so our main focus is helping students get involved in our recognized student organizations. Um, but in general, we're also happy to help students get connected to different parts of campus, depending on what type of experience you're looking for. So um, oftentimes I feel like students come to SAE looking for something else and we might be like, well, we don't do that here, but you know, here there's where you go to do service like CCE and CORE and so we'll um, send them in that direction or the James Farmer Multicultural Center or Campus Rec or student employment, you know, lots of different um, areas. And so we're always happy to, to help students get connected to those different parts of campus. Um, but again, we do, we do oversee um, all of our student organizations. We have about 150 recognized active student organizations. 
Um, and we help them with things like recruitment. And so we're gonna be talking about something called Club Carnival in a little bit, which Kelly had mentioned. Um, and also how to retain club members. Um, all of our clubs are looking for um, new members in the fall. So we really hope that you'll get involved. Um, and also event planning or meeting, or even just meeting planning as well. Not all of our um, clubs do host events, but a lot of them do host small or large scale events. Um, but Crystal, I was wondering if you might want to talk a little bit about how um, our office works, kind of our front desk, what types of different things we have to rent out, um, how our office works in general. Yeah, so in pre-COVID times, we were known as the super fun office on campus. <laughs> I'm hoping if, you know, when things get better, we can start bringing out all the fun things. Um, but basically, our office helps clubs with anything they need to help put on events. So we have a workroom, which is called the ICA workroom. So if you join a club and you need to make a poster or make buttons or anything like that, that would be the, um, the workroom you do it in. Um, we also have a cricket, which I do not know how to use, but people are always excited when we tell them we have a cricket. Um, so if you know how to use a cricket, we do have one. Um, so when you come into SAE, you'll be greeted by our front desk staff. There's usually two to three people at a time. And that also ties into student employment. We hire people mostly in the spring, but if we have seniors who are graduating like in the fall, so for instance, for fall 2020, we have three seniors who'll be graduating in December. So if you are interested in being employed with our office, you can definitely apply. You can always follow us um, on our Instagram page, which is where we're most active. I did put the our our handle, that's the word, our handle in the chat if you're interested. And you can also follow us there to see the events that we have going on. Um, but basically you'll be greeted by our front desk staff and our front desk staff helps with the ICA workroom. And they also help with the checking out of like big games. So like big Jenga, big chess or no big checkers, I'm sorry, uh, connect four. And they also help with like our popcorn machine which is used by CPB and they help with all of the big items that we have to check out to clubs. So um, if you ever are a part of a club and ever need to rent something or check something out, you would go through the front desk. And so our main task as an office is to help is to help clubs with any questions they may have or to help them put on events that they want to have on campus. For sure. And Crystal mentioned CPB, which you'll be learning about mm -hmm. in a little bit as well. We love our acronyms because when things get going fast we just end up shortening things and then people are like what what does all that mean um so i did let me see if i can screen share because i know that crystal did um include the link to our website but i did want to pull that up let's see there we go just so you can find it there it is okay hopefully Thumbs up, Crystal, does that, can you see our, yes, okay, perfect, okay. Um, you'd think that we've been in this for over a year and we have that figured out, but so here's our website, um, students.umw.edu slash student activities. Um, and whether you're just looking to get involved or you are, you get involved in a club in the fall and you are trying to help put on an event or anything like that, you can come to our website. Um, you know, we've got a tab for new students um, that you can check out to see where that takes you. And of course, I feel like screen sharing and Zoom just it makes everything work so slow. Um, but we've got a video on how to navigate MyUMW, which I'll actually um, show you in just a little bit. Um, we've got a, a tab, um, things to do in a calendar of events. Um, and a little bit, I'm gonna talk about what this year has looked like and what we expect for the fall, just, you know, COVID times and kind of as we're maybe hopefully, fingers crossed, getting towards the end of COVID times. Um, but we do go into a little bit of detail and we do have kind of a whole uh, document of things that you can do um, even with some of the COVID restrictions in place um, as well as a calendar of events. And um, I'll show you a different way to find out about that too. We've got a whole tab of resources for our clubs and um, just you know how to start a club. If you look at our student organizations and you don't see what you want, um, steps on how to start a club, the difference between our different tiers of clubs, um, information on uh, events and 
um, promoting events and all that kind of good stuff. Student government, if you want to learn a little bit more about SGA, you can go there. So I don't want to get too much in the weeds, but um, I know Campus Rec did talk about some employment and Kelly mentioned that too, or Crystal mentioned that too. Um, you can go here if you're like, oh, that could be fun. I like to do event planning or like, that sounds like a cool place to work. Um, so you can see some of our roles there, but you'll also um, learn to come here for a few different things, even you know through graduation, graduation cords. We also do something called Eagle Awards, which is like student leadership and organization awards. So we kind of um, house a lot of different things um, on our website. Um, and while I'm here, uh, among the um, club support that we do, the big event support that we do, some of the other um, big events that we help support are things like new student arrival, um, so like orientation type things, homecoming, family weekend, um, into some of the traditions that we're going to be talking about in a little bit. Um, we kind of help oversee all of that. We've got the equipment. Um, we really love doing all the fun stuff. We, we help Campus Rec when we can. We help um, core and CCE when we can. So, um, but something else that we oversee is leadership programming. And so that is both for um, our club officers and kind of formal recognized leadership roles, but also informal leadership opportunities. Um, but we're, what we're really excited about is this brand new presidential emerging leaders program. Maybe some of you today um, that are here today have applied and been offered positions. Um, we are, it's kind of a, a rolling process. Um, but here is the, the link if you want to learn more about the Presidential Emerging Leaders Program. It's again brand new. We're going to be welcoming our first cohort this fall. Um, and essentially it's, it's not a class. We want it to be really fun and hands-on. And it's um, this group of students. It's going to be about 40 students. They're going to be meeting twice a month to talk about different sessions or different um, topics around leadership. But again, we really want it to be hands-on and engaging. It's not going to feel like a lecture um, twice a month. We uh, really want you to walk away with a, a leadership portfolio of sorts um, so that you can feel really prepared to take on those leadership positions, both at UMW, um, but also beyond, you know, beyond after graduation or maybe during internships. Um, so I did want to um, kind of just point this out. Um, again, maybe there's some folks here tonight that, that have heard about it or maybe you've applied. Um, so feel free if you do have any questions about the PELP program, um, we'd be happy to answer those as well. So, um, so that is that. I think while I'm sharing my screen, I'm just going to hop over to um, uh, kind of switching gears a little bit, talking about how to get involved. So obviously, um, we emphasize this whole session is about getting involved. Obviously, we know that you are here to get a degree, um, but I think everyone on the panel tonight knows the importance of getting involved outside of the classroom. And really a lot of what we focus on, we wanted to um, maybe enhance what you're doing in the classroom, um, really enhance what you're learning, but we also want you to make sure, we wanna make sure that you're having a lot of fun um, making friends and sometimes, you know, you can, you can certainly make friends in class, of course, um, but being able to connect over common interests and hobbies, I think is really important. I feel like I'm just yammering on. So lots of different ways to get involved. And one of those is my UMW. So we are here at the UMW home screen. I know it's probably a little distracting having the scrolling. So I just wanted to start at the my UMW or the, the UMW homepage, umw.edu. I'm so excited. I'm just talking too fast. So MyUMW is that very first logo in that top left-hand corner. Um, so it'll take you to kind of our, it's like, I don't wanna, it's not, it's not really like Facebook for UMW student organizations and events, but it's our own personal portal where you can find out, um, you can check out all of our clubs, you can check out what's going on. You'll see just on this homepage, um, it might be showing any events that are happening. Um, you might have heard or will hear about a, a tradition called Devil Goat Day. But instead of Devil Goat Day, we're doing a whole week. Um, and today, not scary, Day of Rage. <laughs> um, they uh, are out on Jeffy Square right now, um, breaking fragile things, allowing students to get some stress out before finals. Um, it was awesome. It was, it was awesome. awesome. So awesome. Um, but I know Day of Rage sounds a little scary. But so you'll see what's going on, some events, some upcoming events that are happening, any featured organizations. Um, 
any experience types that if you're looking for um, traditions, research, leadership, um, you can really, I mean, I, I just love it. I feel like I spend a lot of time here. Um, I will say that my UMW works best in Google Chrome. So um, sometimes it might show up a little funky on your phone or if you use a different um, internet browser. So definitely Google Chrome. But the thing you might be most interested in is our organizations right now. And you can search um, here, if you click on organizations, you'll be able to look at all of our different um, organizations that have portals. And you'll see that many of our departments have portals too. Um, and a portal is just a place where you can go and you can learn more about each different organization, whether it's a club or a department. So you can kind of click on any, anyone that might be of interest to you. Let's say that you are gonna be studying biology. So you're like, well, maybe I wanna do an academic type club. Um, so you can look here and you'll be able to read a little bit about, um, about the club, maybe when their meeting is, where it is, or if it's virtual. Uh, and any other information that might have. <laughs> Biology club, got some <laughs> bugs. <laughs> I don't, clearly don't know anything about uh, slugs. Um, so, um, but again, you can search through all of our different organizations. You can search, maybe if you're in a specific club right now in high school, you can search to see if we have the, the college equivalent. Um, you can also search by category. So if you know that you want to do community service, you can look for all our service clubs. You'll be able to see all those different core specific groups listed there. Um, any, if you're looking for maybe the multicultural groups or faith-based groups, again, academic is a great way to kind of enhance what you're learning in the classroom. Um, so you can search through all of those student governance. I'll be talking about that in a little bit. Um, so um, just love it again. Um, and now I will say that a lot of our portals or a lot of our clubs are in the process of updating their portals for the coming years. So some of them might be in progress right now, um, but you really can get a good sense of what clubs we have. And then again, if you don't see what you, a club that you really want us to have, um, you can always reach out to SAE and we can let you know if um, maybe we typically have that club, but maybe because of the pandemic, they have decided to kind of hibernate for a year and we can let you know if they're gonna be reactivated next year or maybe you can help reactivate them. Um, so, or if it's been a club that has never existed at UMW and again, we can help you get that started. So um, I just wanted to show the events tab as well. You can get a good sense of what types of events are going on. Um, and it does look a little bit different this year, of course, um, because of the pandemic, but hopefully next year we'll be completely back in action um, so you don't need to log in to get to, to a lot of this information. You can hop right into my UMW to check it out. Um, some, as you get deeper, there might be some parts of my UMW that might ask you to log in. So um, until you get your username and ID, which you might already have, but if not, um, there should still be a lot of information that you can access. So, so excited. I spend a lot of time in my UMW, so I, I just want to make sure students know all the, the good content that is in there. Um, so let me look through my list, talked about leadership, talked about my UMW. Crystal, how about we give people a break um, here for me, and do you want to talk about Club Carnival a little bit? Yeah, so the Club Carnival happens twice a year, so each semester, and it usually happens the first week of classes. So for the fall COVID COVID not being a thing. Uh, hopefully we'll have it outside. It's usually outside on Ball Circle in the fall. And basically we have about a hundred clubs out there in the fall, if not a little over that. So basically what the clubs will do is they will uh, fill out a form to be able to participate. And basically they'll table for about two to three hours. And then you guys will be able to come and like walk around and meet the clubs in person. Um, so I know with, with COVID, we did it virtually, um, which also saw some success for sure. Um, but we do gain more traction when people like see it and stop and go like, oh, cool, that is happening. And then they actually go. And a lot of students want to meet the clubs in person. So that's why having it in person is very, is very helpful. So hopefully in the fall, we can have it in person. Um, so you guys can get the full experience. Um, like Sandrine said, we have a, over 150 clubs. So you are more than likely to find something that, that speaks to you. And we recommend just signing up for as many clubs as you want, and then you can narrow it down to what is most feasible for you. 
um, because that is how people end up finding their home away from home. So I highly recommend if we do have it in the fall, just putting your name on as many lists as possible and then narrowing it, narrowing it down um, to what you think is the most feasible. And then for winter, it's in the UC in Chandler Ballroom. Pretty much, pretty much all over the university center. Um, yes. because there's always so many groups that are participating. So we kind of spread out. And of course, uh, you know, we, uh, we'll wait and see how things are next year, COVID wise, but hopefully um, it'll feel a little bit back to normal to help you get involved. Because yes, like Crystal said, it's, it's such a great way. And there's no commitment. You know, when you sign up at Club Carnival, it's not like you're signing away your, your life and your time and all your free time. You can really um, go to an interest meeting. We often host, um, help the clubs host a lot of interest meetings. Um, and at any point you can, you know, if you're kind of like, oh, I don't think I have time for this right now, or maybe let me rejoin in the, in the spring. Um, but just to, just to start to get to connected to those clubs, I think it's, it's a great idea. Awesome. Um, so just a few other things. I do want to keep an eye on the, the clock just to leave any extra time for questions. And again, feel free to, to um, throw your questions into the chat. But um, so Crystal talked about Club Carnival in terms of getting involved with any student organization and also a lot of our departments. Um, but some of you may be interested in running for an elected position. Um, and a lot of our elected groups, kind of like um, Student Government Association, um, class council, which Crystal will be talking about. And we've also got two groups called Honor Council and the Student Conduct Review Board. And those are two kind of peer-to-peer -peer accountability boards. So the Honor Council um, oversees potential honor violations and the Student Conduct Review Board oversees potential conduct um, violations. And so they hear um, any of those cases. Um, but it's a great a, a great leadership opportunity for you to kind of jump right into at the start of the year. Um, so those, uh, those elections take place in about mid-September um, and those groups are typically at Club Carnival. So if you're like, I'm involved with SGA right now, I know that this is what I wanted to do or I wanna be a Senator um, or, you know, class council does a lot of the traditions, which again, you know, Crystal will, will chat about in a second, but, um, but you, you will find out more information. We will be sending out campus information campus-wide about those, but um, that is, it's good to be on your toes if you know that you want to, to run for any of those positions. It's good to kind of make sure that you're um, paying attention for that information because the election timeline does happen pretty quickly once the semester starts. But um, Crystal, do you want to hop in and, and chat a little bit about two groups that we pretty closely work with, um, the Campus Programming Board, CPB, mm -hmm. and Class Council? Yeah, so CPB and class council. So I'm going to break it up because it's a little bit easier to, to explain. So CPB is pretty much you can join whenever you want to. So we have people who join their freshman year and then climb up the ranks to their senior year, or we have people who join their junior year and then do it their senior year. So CPB does all of the really big events on campus. So in a non-COVID year, we have like the big spring concert, for instance. So the last concert we had, we had AJR. And the year after that, when COVID hit, we were supposed to have Jesse McCartney. I'm not, I'm not salty about it at all, but that, that was supposed to happen. Um, this year, we had a cooking demonstration with Anthony from Queer Eye. So if you like planning really big events, I recommend CBB to be the place that you pretty much like put your roots down. Um, we also do weekly bingo. We do week monthly trivia and we also do monthly karaoke and then um if we are able to meet in person and do events in person um we also used to do trips to king's dominion like once a semester and then we used to do baseball games to the nationals yes um so hopefully we can get back to that point where those are events that cpb can put on so basically all of the really big events cpb helps plan um, and then it's easy to join. You can just go to a general meeting and then you'll pick the cabinet that you want to be a part of. So we have productions. We have, oh, Sandrine, I may need your help. We have productions. We have and productions and productions does the concerts. Yes. And then events does both like the weekly bingo, which is, which is really popular, mm -hmm. um, with prizes and then, and big events that does things like carnivals. Yes. Um, and then movies, weekly yes. movies. So, yeah. Yes, hopefully we can also bring back movies. Um, so we had a movie on Jeffy Square 
which SAE did help put together. We saw Soul, but usually CPB does that. So if you are a cinephile like me, I can help you out. Um, if you like movies, that could definitely be the cabinet that you become a part of. And then for class council, you basically have to be elected. So most people who run their freshman year end up staying the entire four years to class council. So basically you, pay, you plan the traditional event. So double goat day, I think is probably the biggest deal on campus. I didn't go to UMW. So when I came, it was very odd, but it's really cool because it's so unique. And it's been around since like, 1970s. If you ever meet Dean Rucker, he time. can give you the whole, the whole story. But basically, you guys would be class of 2025, so you would be devils. I am a go if I would have went. Um, so if you graduate in an odd year, you're a devil, and if you graduate in an even year, you're a goat. And basically, double goat day is like a field day of sorts where you have both like groups compete and see who gets um, like the highest points, and then whoever does, they get bragging rights for the year. Um, so if you are part of class council, I think it's the senior class usually plans that, but they do ask for assistance from the other classes. And then we have a shirt every year and it changes, like the design changes. So for a lot of people, their goal is to collect a shirt for each year, uh, which is really cool. And then we have lip sync and then we have spring formal. If we are able to be in person with COVID, we have fall formal, we have senior countdown, which I know some of the prizes for this year was a switch a tv apple watch basically if you want really cool stuff i recommend that you join class council so for both so for class council you would run as a freshman and basically if you become the president of your class you can speak at graduation um, when it's your time to graduate so if you like event planning i recommend both if you like the more traditional stuff the same events you do every year i recommend class council and if you like to spice it up a little bit and do more different things, um, I recommend CPB. But you will see myself and Sandrine as advisors for both. So if you want to crisscross, you can. We have a ton of people who do that. Um, so if event planning is your thing, I highly recommend joining one of the two. Yes, and just, I mean, getting to be involved with those and behind the scenes, I think is fun. And um, again, I mean, you help to make a lot of the fun um like memory memory making opportunities for your classmates so it's just so fun um and i i know we're running out of time and i know you've heard us reference a lot about um what it looks like this year and and so this year um you know in order to be able to stay on campus and allow students to be on campus we did have very um strict covid regulations and so that meant a lot of our events were virtual or we did a lot of what we called um, take and makes. So you would come to our, our office, grab the supplies to be able to make something back in your residence hall um, or your apartment or your, your, your house off campus. Um, and so I, I honestly, and some of those were so popular that we'll probably keep doing those in the future, no matter what um, circumstances we're in. Um, but we're hoping that a lot of our events next year can be um, at least in person, whether it's outside and distanced with masks on or inside in a larger space distance. But so we are kind of planning for all the different contingency plans. But um, we do, I think we've learned a lot this year and we really want our students, especially our first year students to feel engaged and feel like they're able to get involved and meet new people. So um, we're really excited that um, there are a lot of it's it's looking up for us so we're just going to keep our fingers crossed for what the fall is going to look like um and you know i know crystal put our social um uh handles in there both sae i think is up above and then cpb and class council definitely follow all those on social media just to to already get a sense of what's going on and then that way you'll definitely know what's going on in the fall um and really, other than that, um, our email, you can just, if you have any questions about getting involved, feel free to email. It's just sae at umw.edu. I know Crystal is about to put it in the chat. Um, so you can send us any questions via email. But I did want to give a shout out. I know that we um, didn't really go into detail about our um, James Farmer Multicultural Center. And that's another really great way to get involved with our multicultural student organizations. They do the, the JFMC does so much multicultural programming throughout the year. 
um, kind of in, in, in April, it kind of, it works its way up to the huge multicultural fair that they put on. Um, but so I, I don't, you know, if you came to this session, session really hoping to hear from them, um, I'm sorry that we don't uh, have someone representing them today, but that is because they have a session tomorrow. I believe that's at five o'clock. Um, so if you haven't RSVP for that, I, I hope that you still can, but I know that they're gonna record it. So you'll be able to access that information, but um, definitely know that you'll be hearing more about um, them. You can hear more about them tomorrow. And um, Crystal has put their information in the chat as well, but they just do so, so much um, for our students and, and to educate our whole campus and our whole community. Um, but that's why they have a whole session dedicated to, to the JFMC tomorrow night. So, um, but I, I know we only have five minutes um, but we can hang out uh, just if you have any other questions, um, feel free to drop them in the chat or you're welcome to hop on screen if you want. Um, but we, yeah, we will be here. And again, um, you've got our contact information um, if you think of any questions, um, but if not, we hope you have a lovely evening. Go Eagles. Yay. You're welcome. <laughs>